we're sitting here having a great conversation with Mary Palmer. Mary, it's great to be with you. You were just telling me a little while ago about a fascinating history that you have had that is now culminating in you taking up painting after many, many years. Can you tell us about your history? You began with, you were from here, this local area, and then you moved to Texas, and then you ended up in New York, and can you take us into all that stuff that you did? Okay, well, I went to Wyomissing High School. I was a student there, K through 12. And I went to Southern Methodist University in Dallas. And I took no art classes. I was a history major, history and social science major. And, uh, so that's good to hear that you're a history major. We need more history majors. More history days. majors. And um, it's funny, when I was in school, I had some art major friends and I always thought what they did wasn't really serious you know serious academia because you know, by comparison to history you think you, you I know. thought that what I you know because I was writing papers that I you know I was more of a student or a scholar and here I am doing the art I always loved what they did I think I was always envious of their of their majors okay. but um, I, I I went a history major and then my first job I was an editor where was that first job? In Dallas. In, in Dallas. Dallas. And then I got married and moved to New York City. And I was an editor there for International Paper. And then I moved into sales for International Paper. And I decided I did not want to wake up at 35 and work for a major corporation. So I thought, well, what do I like to do? And I had worked with an interior designer in New York. And I thought that seemed like a lot of fun. And I lived three blocks from Parsons School of Design. What a great thing that is. Yeah. And so I thought that um, I'd take a class for credit just in case I decided I wanted to do this, you know, for a degree and see if I liked it. And I loved it. And uh, I did well in it. And so I quit my job and went full time. I actually, it was interesting. I lived in Reading and commuted to New York two days a week in order to, um, to go to the Parsons School. To go to a Parsons School, right. I stayed with friends overnight and I crammed all my courses into three days. So Parsons was a great school. I was, I was definitely the oldest person. I was 30 and uh, 29. Anyway, I was definitely the oldest person in my class. And I was like that adult education person that all students hate because I work really hard. But the courses required so much time and so much work. Um, it was really hard, but it was great. And I was required to take one fine arts class. And so I chose watercolor. And I really enjoyed watercolor, but I just put it on the back burner until 19, 2019, so yeah. So you are recently retrieving uh, some of background in art and you're making a go of it now because you're doing a lot of work and people are recognizing your work. Right, I just, um, I mean, I always had, you know, learning about watercolor in the back of my mind as sort of something I would do when I wasn't working or I used to ride a horse and, and play golf and do all these other things. I didn't have time and I'm getting out of some of those things and so I had time and I just decided to, I called up Fran Parsonese, who's a, 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 an acquaintance, and asked her if she would give me lessons. And this was in September of last year, so it's like a year ago. And she you know, like lit the flames for me to do this. And at the time, too, I had uh, rented for one year an apartment in California, because my daughter lives in San Francisco, and so I rented a, an apartment out there to see if I wanted to move to California and be closer to her. And so clearly I didn't have a lot to do out there. So I set up a little painting area in my apartment and I was pretty prolific out there because I didn't have really anything else to do. Um, so I loved it. And I started posting some of my things on Facebook and, and then my daughter says, well, you should have an Instagram account. So I started an Instagram account and I was really shocked and and amazed at the, you know, compliments I got from my painting, so I just kept at it. 
What a great thing. So you've gotten to know, you, you've got some computer savvy to create these accounts, etc. Or did you develop that? No, no. I've always been pretty good with the computer. I mean, I ran my own business, Kevin. I had an interior design business. I started in 1980 and I retired what, three or four years ago. So, uh, you know, I had to you know, I had some marketing background, I had obviously business background, so, you know, I knew how to do a lot of those things because of my business. Let me ask this one question. So, yeah. interior design, isn't that artistry as well? Oh. Isn't it? A, a, you're an artist as an interior oh, designer. Oh, for sure, for sure. Can you speak about that just a little bit? Well, people have asked me, like, oh my gosh, uh, you know, how do you create something like this or some of these other things? And one of the benefits I have that maybe a starting artist doesn't have is I have a good sense of scale. Um, I have taken actually some photography classes, so I knew compositionally what makes an interesting piece. But I think a lot of it is just color sense that I have as an interior designer that applies. I'll do this painting and I'll say, ooh, I need, I need a little bit of this color and then I need to balance it over there. And so that, you know, that's not something I learned. It's just something that I intrinsically have just because of the background I have. I got to ask this question. So color. Right. As an interior designer, you've got an intuitive sense of color. You're right. bringing this to your artistry. Uh, as a painter, and you've got a lot of vivacious colors. Are you a colorist as an artist? Oh, for me, yes. Yes, I don't like painting. I took a, a, a two-day workshop with an artist this winter. Um, I win her in Florida, and so I took this class in Florida, and she was she painted in very subtle tones, grays, and you know, like a really, um, you know, the, it, it's an artistic style, and I just really didn't like it because I, the color makes me happy, always has. So yeah. Um. So, what's going on in these paintings? Can you take us through them a little bit? And it looks like you're very influenced by uh, nature and specific elements of nature. Well, yes, I think that nature, I, I like landscape style more than maybe still life style. Um, this painting was based on some of the sense of a woman by the name of Jean Carbonetti, who had a book called The Tao of Watercolor. And I loved her style where you basically, uh, you know, you're just throwing color on paper and you kind of see where it goes. To me, that's the most fascinating thing is when you just start throwing color on paper and you don't even know where it's going to end up. So there's nothing in your imagination when you start except Sometimes you're going to work with these not. colors. This, this I knew I was going to do some birches because I had um, masked out the main part of the trees, but then I just started throwing color on there. And so you don't really know how it comes out and now it looks kind of like there's a stream that goes through there and that really wasn't intentional in the beginning. So it kind of happens it along just, the way. You know, kind of like a sculptor says there is a, you know, there's art within the stone and it becomes revealed through the, you know, sculpting. It's kind of how it happens with some of my painting. Now, if you take the pool painting, that's my pool in Florida and those are my my daughter and her husband in the pool. Um, Anyway, that was very, very detailed and it took a long time to sketch and um, there was nothing really haphazard about that one. Uh, but the one next to it, that was another piece that Jean Car Carbonetti inspired piece where again, I just threw water on it, let it drip down and lo and behold, it, it just kind of, I don't know, like hydrangeas in the, I don't even know what it is, but I really like, I brought it in here because I really liked it and I don't even know what it is but um, I like the sense of that. So the artist can produce things and not really know what, what they're producing and they might have to figure out what they're gonna name it later on. Exactly, um, and um, I don't, Cheryl Elmo, who is a, who is a large, local artist, gave me one of the best pieces of advice. She goes, every painting goes through an ugly period. And I thought, oh, that's so true. You know, you start painting and you think, oh, this is terrible. You know, and you have to walk away, and then you come back and you think, nope, 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 I can, I can save this, I can, and the next thing you know, you add a little bit of this color, add a little bit of, you know, form over here, and, and you think, well, that's, that's pretty good, I like that, and then you work on it a little bit more, and next thing you know, that's pretty good, and I'm always surprised.
like when I'm done. If it's when you say it's pretty good, what does that mean to you? That you start and you've got to go through this ugly period. So do you right. know that you're in the ugly period? Oh yeah, you definitely. Kid? I'm a, like I want to throw it out, mm -hmm. kind of thing. But you force yourself to go to what? Say I've got. It, I'm going to turn like, this. Into yeah, like how can I fix this? How can I make like for instance the piece that's next to you, the center section, that soft green with the yellow. That actually happened by mistake. I mean, it wasn't. I wasn't intending to do that. It, it almost got a little bit messy, and I thought, okay, how can I make this work? And I added a little bit of the darker green, and then I don't know. It just it, you know, when it happens, sometimes I think, oh, that's terrible, and then lo and behold, it turns out to be the best part of the painting, or at least in my opinion, it's the best part of the painting. So you're kind of discovering both what you're doing in the painting, you're discovering when the end of the painting is there. Right, that's the hard part for me too, is saying, okay, it's done, you know. One of the things we're wanting to know is how this time of pandemic virus, uh, this, the, 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 the pandemic, COVID, affected you as a painter and the direction of your painting. It sounds like maybe in the last year you had more time. Can you just talk about the relationship there? Well, we're, I mean, every painting is a new experience for me. And so I don't have a style. I don't think I have a style or anything, but because of the pandemic, oh my gosh, I had tons of time. I mean, what else was I going to do? You know, being creative is basic, you know, creating is a passion for me, always has been. and. So that the fact that I could create something every day, I painted almost every day, or you know, I would be working on something for multiple days, but I just kept it out on my kitchen countertop, and I would just keep working at it, and um, it gave me a sense of purpose, and a sense of um, completion, and, and then as I would post it, and I would get compliments, that would be a plus also, so yeah. Um, I don't, I really don't know how I would have survived the whole quarantine time without the painting. I just don't. So the painting was kind of salvific for you during that time. Oh, gave you something to do and some oh. sense of meaning. I mean, I really, I mean, I'm serious. I don't know where my mental state would have been if I hadn't had the painting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I gotta ask this wild question. So <laughs> when I'm looking at your paintings and knowing that you are an interior mm -hmm. designer, I have some thoughts about fabric in my head. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at, at particularly those two paintings and I'm thinking there's something fabric in them, some kind of an appearance of fabric. Can you talk about the connection between your experience of selecting fabrics and your mate making of paintings uh, and your awareness of color there. Well, it's, it's funny you bring up fabrics because oftentimes when I'd be working with a client, I would have an idea of the fabric that I wanted for the space. And I would look and look and look and say, I can't find this fabric. I said, I'm just going to have to design this fabric. I never did. But um, that. Uh, you know, I would spend hours and hours just pouring through fabrics at the design center trying to find what was already in my mind. So sometimes I thought, oh no, you gotta get that fabric out of your mind because you're never gonna find that. Um, but I do think that, you know, my goodness, I was a designer for so many years that, you know, again, it goes to a sense of design and scale and color and balance you know, texture, value, all those things that, you know, just was kind of part of, the, of my work. Yeah, what a cool thing, that great connection. Yeah. In our earlier conversation, you talked about uh, that when you're, sell when you're selling paintings, you want to make contributions to the Yoakum Institute and to Rack. And so, what is your history with the Oakham Institute and Rack and? Okay, well, first of all, I want to say the fact that I can even sell my paintings is just amazing to me. I, I'm, I, I said to you, this, I'm gobsmacked that I actually have an exhibition of my work because I make it for myself. And well, people have asked me, "Are you going to sell this?" I think like, "Oh, no, I don't know." And then, as as this has progressed, I thought, "Well, I certainly don't." want to sell it for myself. I don't want to, you know, 
profit from this. It's not that's not the perp was never the purpose of my doing art to be a, an income source. So I am happened to be on the foundation board for REC, and so I believe thoroughly in the community college vision, and I. Um, helped raise some money for this building here for Yoakum. My kids went to the Y Missing Institute of Fine Arts mm -hmm. for uh, all their preschool years, so I've, I've been part of the, inst the Institute, you know, for most of my life. I went to the Institute back in, uh, back in the day. So we've got to hear about back in the day what the Institute was like in just a moment, but okay. keep up with your story there. Anyway, so I thought that um, I would, so, so Susan and I came up with an agreement, 30% to Yoakum and 70% to REC. And so that every penny of selling this art is going to them. And I even framed everything at my own expense. And I'm going to you know, just give 100% of the proceeds to REC and Yoakum. So you really believe in education and uh, fostering education through oh. what you can do. Oh, absolutely. Ab and, and I think community college is so important because, you know, it's an affordable way for people to get an education who couldn't afford to go in any other place. And REC, much like Avernia, we, you know, talk about your uh, employer, that, you know, so many of these students go on scholarship. You know, they couldn't even think about going to school without scholarships. So the foundation raises money for the students, but uh, the proceeds for this is going to the emergency student fund, which will help with day-to-day -day expenses that would normally derail the educational experience for them, so. This is a wonderful thing to hear. We don't have lots of time. No, we wanna, don't, okay. I wanna ask you this one question. Yes. You are discovering, after another career, that you have a whole new direction in life because of art. What would you say to other people about discovering the artist within them after they've done many, many things? Uh, it seems very inspirational to me that um, you and other people have new things to look forward to after you've done other things. For me, I have to have an ability to learn something new. I think that if we're not learning anything, we've become, become stale. I, um, I would, you know, say to people, what would you do if you could not fail? You know, and I, you know, and you'd be stunned how the universe gives back to you in terms of, of joy and passion when you try something new. I really like that thought about trying something new. Mary, thank you so much. Oh, you're for welcome, Kevin. Thank you.